Just recently, I was talking about the top tablets of 2014, but not everyone is a tablet kind of person. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the top laptops of 2014. So I'm Eric, this is Tech Inside, let's hit the intro. Alright, so picking a best laptop is kind of hard. I mean, when it comes to tablets, there's bad tablets and good tablets. And there's a pretty fine line in between them. When it comes to laptops though, there's bad laptops, okay laptops, good laptops, and great laptops. So it's a little bit hard. But in my opinion, the best laptop right now is Apple's MacBook Pros. And to be more specific, I'm going to use the MacBook Pro 15 inch, the highest end version. This overall is a great computer. Looking at a design standpoint, it's very thin, almost on par with an Ultrabook. It's not as thin as an Ultrabook, but it's close enough and even if it wasn't as thin, it still is great for portability. It's also not that heavy. And even though it's very thin and all, it has some great battery life and great performance. Now looking at the performance, it's going to have an i7 quad core processor. If you get the highest end one, it's going to have discrete graphic card. So if you're doing video editing, it's going to be great. Even you can get away with gaming if you install Windows on it or even play some Mac games. I don't like saying that, but if you, even if you're going to play Mac games or install Windows, you're going to be getting some decent performance with the NVIDIA 750M. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as a designated desktop that's like behind me or even some of the higher end laptops out there. But overall, I think the MacBook Pro 15 inch with the retina display, yes, it has a retina display, which looks gorgeous, just is a great balance for really everything and is going to be able to do almost everything. And in case you really don't want to get a Mac and you want to get a Windows computer, in my opinion, the PC equivalent to the MacBook Pro Retina is Dell's computer, the Dell XPS 15. If you go to the highest end model, you can get some basically very similar specs. I don't think the design is as good, but it's up to par, I think, with the Retina, at least in some regards, so I'm going to consider it a good equivalent. So moving on to our next category, gaming. Gaming is very involved with specs, and so that's why a lot of people build gaming desktops like the one I have behind me. Now, I could go on like Alienware's website and customize a computer to be the most specced out machine possible, but that's not really going to help anyone. Also, I could just go on Razer's website and just say the Razer Blade is the best gaming laptop, which it is a great gaming laptop. If you don't know, I mentioned the Razer Blade was last year's best gaming computer, at least that I considered. But this year, although like the Razer Blade and an Alienware are still great options, I'm going to give you an option that is great for the money. And that is an Asus computer. It's the Asus, get ready for a long name. Asus ROG GL551JM EH74. Yeah, I don't know why that has a ridiculous name. Regardless, it has a 15.6 inch display, which is very similar size to the uh, MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch. It's actually the same size. Looking at the specs though, it has another i7 quad core processor. Uh, when it comes to graphics, it has an 860M. So that's actually a step up from uh, the MacBook Pro Retina, which I kind of hate to say, but it is a step up. Uh, also, you have a 256GB SSD, or you can get a 1TB hard drive, depends on what uh, option you want to choose. Regardless, the configuration I mentioned with the SSD is only 1200 bucks. 1200 isn't a lot for the specs you're getting, especially because this, in some way, in some ways, out specs the MacBook Pro, which I just said was the best computer. Of course, there are some trade-offs with this Asus computer. I mean, it's not as thin, might not look as nice compared to other people's opinions, might not have as good of a screen. So there definitely are benefits to both. But gaming-wise, this Asus computer might be the best bang for your buck. So now moving on to our next category, Ultrabooks. Now, this year, I feel really didn't talk a whole lot about Ultrabooks, and that's because of tablets and hybrid devices. We saw a lot of laptops that were like hybrids, that had touch screens and fancy swivel screens to make them tablets. We also saw like tablets that 
ran Windows 8 and had a dock, so they turned into like netbooks slash ultra books. Regardless, I really wasn't that impressed with any of the hybrid devices that we've seen this year. And that's actually saying a lot because I love the concept of hybrid devices. I'm just waiting for a device, like a nice big tablet that I can use as a laptop, a tablet, and a desktop. Because my ideal situation would be having an awesome phone and an awesome tablet, and that's all. Anyway, that, that's besides the point. Regardless, going back to Ultrabooks, uh, yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot of Ultrabooks that came out this year that I really want to mention. So for the best Ultrabook of 2014, I don't have a specific one, but I'll just take a look at ASUS's ZenBooks. The ASUS ZenBooks are really nice computers. Uh, some of you will say the screens on, are on them aren't amazing, but... I guess you have to look at the uh, specific models. Regardless, though, they have some really nice performance for what you're getting, and especially for the money and great design. But it also, if you just want to go with a straight Ultrabook that you know is going to be excellent, you can also take a look at Apple's MacBook Airs. Uh, I'll have some links down below to like Asus ZenBooks or any Ultrabooks I recommend. The Ultrabook category is a little bit iffy right now because I didn't really see a whole lot of things I was impressed about, so sorry. Anyway, moving on to our final laptop suggestion of the day actually is a Chromebook. And I mentioned Chromebooks because Chromebooks actually are some nice pieces of technology, for many at least. Nowadays, not everyone needs a full-blown computer. So a Chromebook is a very nice and cheap option to go if you want a computer, but you don't need a full desktop or laptop like I have for all video editing and gaming. Some people just need to access the internet. And I think they're crazy, but it's true. So if you're looking for a Chromebook that's not too much money, like two to $300, I'd recommend taking a look at the Toshiba Chromebook 2. Now there's a decent amount of Chromebooks nowadays, and all of them have their kinks and quirks and whatnot. But again, the Toshiba Chromebook 2 just seems to be a great balance, like I kind of mentioned with the MacBook Pro Retina. The Toshiba Chromebook 2 isn't going to be the fastest, isn't going to be the nicest Chromebook out there, but it overall performs and does the greatest job. I mean, you can look at other Chromebooks, and some have great keyboards and mouses, but a crappy screen. Some have great performances, but a terrible design and terrible battery life. Some have great everything, but a terrible screen, or I, there's tons of configurations that are possible. But the Toshiba Chromebook 2 just is a great overall. It has decent battery life, enough performance that's going to get you through anything you need to do on the web, it has a decent screen for viewing angles, actually kind of actually one of the best screens that I've seen, at least if you take out the Chromebook Pixel, which Google made. Regardless, the Toshiba Chromebook 2 is going to be just a great Chromebook overall if you're interested in something like that. So anyway guys, those are the top laptops of 2014. In my opinion, I actually think some of the laptops were kind of lagging this year, and that's mostly because Intel didn't actually come out with any new processors this year. They were supposed to come out with Broadwell, but that has been delayed. So probably next year we're going to see a lot of renovations with laptops as well as hybrid devices. So buying a laptop right now might not exactly be the greatest choice, but I mean if you need a laptop or really badly want one, you still can't go wrong with some of the options I gave you today. If you have any other suggestions on laptops that you thought were better than my suggestions or is what you're rocking, let me know in the comment section below. Also, check the description. I'm going to try to have some tons of links on laptops that I've mentioned, maybe even laptops that I did not mention. I'm going to try to have some links to Asus ZenBooks, like I mentioned. Anyway, guys, that is the video for today. If you want to see any other top whatever videos, leave it in the comment section also. Anyway, guys, my name is Eric. This is Tech Inside, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Oh my gosh. Bring. Bring. Shut up, phone.